you know, years ago, I had a, a large IA firm say that, you know, that we are fighting to prevent the commoditization of the adjuster, right? Um, and I was like, well, I, you know, that's pretty forward thinking and you see what's coming. Again, we're not trying to commoditize the adjuster. We're trying to provide the platform by which the adjuster's skill sets can be leveraged, paid for, um, and he can obtain some efficiencies in what he does so that ultimately the adjuster is paid and paid well for what he or she does. The carrier receives uh, the data points that they need in order to make the next decision and move the claim forward. Um, and, and ultimately the policyholder is indemnified. And we're able to do that quickly. Hey, what's up? Matt here with Adjuster TV. And for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. Hit the bell notification so that you never miss a video. Well, I want to welcome everybody to uh, this edition of Adjuster TV. And I've got with me David Milton, who's the founder and CEO of a unique company called Teleclaims. Um, and David is um, an insure tech innovator who's looking to bring more opportunities for adjusters as well as to use tech to kind of help us do our jobs better and make it really easier for us to be more effective in the field. Um, some of the things I want to hit today, um, certainly not going to be limited to this, of course, but, uh, you know, we want to talk a little bit about kind of a return to, to basics on best practices for claims handling. Um, sort of the, my big complaint with a lot of things um, how cobbled together carrier and firm systems have done a lot of damage, more damage really than good um, to our industry by making it harder for us to be effective as adjusters. Um, and I certainly want to go deep on what teleclaims is and what opportunities exist for adjusters as well as talk about something called merge. Uh, but first, welcome David, glad to have you here. Uh, let's start off a little, with a little bit of your background and kind of how it brought to you, you to where you are today with Teleclaims. Sure, Matt, thank you so much. I appreciate the invitation to be here. Glad to speak to your audience. Um, so my background, again, important, sets everything up. So I started as an adjuster 140 years ago. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, out in the field, came from the construction background before that. So uh, started uh, way back in the early 90s as an adjuster. Um, I think those are affectionately referred to now as the good old days. Right, um, the salad and, uh, days. Yeah, exactly. So I uh, did that for a great, great number of years um, through several, I mean, every natural disaster you can sort of think of, cat adjuster, daily work, uh, branch assist work, I mean, every everything under the sun, large loss uh, all over the country. So I really saw a pretty wide berth of claims through that uh, process. And then in 06, uh, working primarily in Florida, saw a great need to start a carrier. There was some real deficiency in language in the policy form jackets and the way those were being applied by many of the Florida carriers. So I actually went out and started raising capital to start my own carrier. I was about halfway through that process when I was approached by an existing insurance company to take over their book of business as an owner and, and run that insurance company. So. Uh, for four or five years, uh, went in and, and grew that book of business pretty substantially uh, from uh, a, a small uh, state carrier to a pretty, uh, you know, mid mid-sized state carrier. Um, pretty significant increase in PML to premium ratios, uh, and started going through the claims process and, and really cleaning that up to what it should be, what what I thought it was always intended to be. Um, left that in 2010, 2011, did some various consulting work for a number of years back in the claim side and on the carrier side. Uh, and then really in 20, probably 2015, Matt, started in earnest, um, sort of taking apart the claims process. Um, and really, since I understood what the carrier's objectives were, and I understood what the adjusters were willing and capable and, and wanted to do, there was a real disconnect between what the carrier, the product the carrier was receiving and what the adjuster was doing. And, and really to be clear, much of that 
product or the process um, was flawed by, by middle management interference where um, uh, people at various carriers would hop in and say, well, if we just had this one more form, if we just had this one more question answered, if we just had this one more uh, process, then man, we would be head and shoulders above in the claims in the claims business. And so we really devolved, if you will, uh, in the you know early 2000s, you know, you know late late 90s, early 2000s, uh, pretty drastically into uh, you know a data analytics sort of nightmare. Um, where every person within middle management with other carriers were trying to figure out how they could slice and dice data better to, you know, move into the next larger corner office, it seemed, and they were doing it on the backs of the adjusters, really, in, in my opinion, without thinking through the ramifications that that had to, the, to their customer, the policyholder, the, the person that ultimately pays all of our bills, uh, is the policyholder, and so anyway, so we sort of jumped in, ripped it all apart, figured out what the carrier wanted, and then set about leveraging technology to build. I'll use this term, and I, I, I've got a. I'm still working on how to characterize our process, but I'll say an app. Um, that is a gross understatement, but people sort of understand app. Um, so we so we build an app um, that. Uh, essentially sits on top of the carrier's systems uh, where the adjusters are handling the claim within our sort of workflow, product flow, uh, and then the relevant data points are being passed back down to the adjuster. So that's so that's what we said about it in 2015 and 16. Um, and uh, we've been at it now for, I guess, six years uh, in earnest and uh, have made some pretty substantial progress uh, through that time and uh, have ultimately developed, again, what you referenced earlier, which is Merge, which is our, our product. Okay. okay. Yeah, very cool. I know, so, I, know, I, know, I know there's a lot there, so I'm sorry. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. So would, you, would it be fair to uh, classify teleclaims as this, this quote unquote app as a kind of a unified adjuster portal? Some place that sort of yeah that, that's exactly right so uh i mean we have we use several different technologies to do that we have a, a web app uh which is you know of course accessible accessible from anybody's desktop um and then we have a an actual an actual app uh, for the adjusters uh, and it's not just adjusters it's adjusters vendors anybody who provides service to a claim those are all part and parcel uh of the combined sort of collective, you know, the ecosphere that we've created uh, by which we're attempting to manage claims, uh, the adjuster being a, a central part of that, obviously not the only part of that, but a central part of that. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're, we're the place where claims stuff happens. You know, facing a lawsuit can be a terrifying and stressful experience, jeopardizing your years of hard work and success. If you don't have adequate insurance coverage as an adjuster, you're putting yourself at great financial risk. If you make your living from handling claims as an independent adjuster, then you must get errors and emissions and general liability insurance coverage. It doesn't matter if you're a 1099 or a W two or you work carrier direct, protect yourself with professional liability insurance from Kaplik. To find out more and to download the insurance for adjusters free guide, head on over to cplic.net slash adjuster TV. That's cplic.net slash adjuster TV. You know, for, for, I guess for folks maybe who are maybe newer to the industry and who, or who haven't done a whole lot of um, like higher level adjusting, we'll say, like maybe they've done um, some, you know, photo and scope stuff. Um, maybe they've done every, you know, they've just gone out and take pictures with their phone and then hit upload and then go off to the next one. Um, just kind of what we're talking about here um, is something that I think has been a, a and again, we sort of kind of referenced it in the beginning, but it's been a problem. Um, like you, like you said, there's you know the, the carriers get excited about analytics and numbers and KPIs and all that kind of stuff, and so they start to, to tack things on um, to what they want us to collect in the field as far as data points go, 
or reporting um, and things like that. And so it, it starts to, to kind of build a sort of a, almost an onerous level of uh, compliance on the part of the adjuster, making something that, you know, a simple job that should be a simple job, which is to collect data, measurements, photos, you know, pr present a, a face to the insured as a representative of the company um, and be able to, you know, kind of flex our bedside muscles, as it were, um, to being kind of covered up in a lot of extra clicks and things like that, that, you know, may move the ball forward somewhere in some department, but aren't helping with the, the on the ground um, claims process. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I feel like, you know, I, everybody I think that's been in this business industry for a while complains about it and you've obviously decided to do something about it. I think this, this whole concept, you know, of, of putting something on top that um, of all of this, I mean, they can keep all that stuff because I know like big companies, they, you know, they develop those things, they develop trainings around them, they have IT departments that are trained on that stuff and they can't just say, all right, well, we're just going to switch because Matt doesn't like it, right? right. Um, but putting something in place that makes it easier for them to train and retain adjusters so that you're not having to spend four months training on systems, like in some places, um, maybe you can get up and running in a week, right? Which I think is a pretty exciting um, you know, potential of, yeah. of what you got going on. Yeah, yeah we, I mean, we would argue even less, right? I mean, I, you know, ultimately, um, you know, years ago, I had a, a large IA firm say that, you know, that we are fighting to prevent the commoditization of the adjuster, right? Um, and I was like, well, I, you know, that's pretty forward thinking and you see what's coming. Again, we're not trying to commoditize the adjuster. We're trying to provide the platform by which the adjuster's skill sets can be leveraged, paid for, um, and he can obtain some efficiencies in what he does so that ultimately the adjuster is paid and paid well for what he or she does. The carrier receives uh, the data points that they need in order to make the next decision and move the claim forward. Um, and, and ultimately the policyholder is indemnified uh, or provided substantial reason why the claim is not covered for, we'll, we'll talk about a covered scenario here just for the purposes of moving forward. Sure. Um, and, and we're able to do that quickly. So, you know, insurance companies need data in order to process a claim. Um, I use the analogy often of a relay race and insurance carriers heretofore have often ran uh, a single person relay race with one person carrying the baton at the same time. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so obviously, uh, if you got four people in the race, uh, it'll take you four times longer to get around the track uh, and cross the ultimate finish line. But if, in, in following this sort of analogy, all four people got to leave at the start line at the same time, not suggesting that everybody gets across the finish line at the same time, but it's certainly going to be much faster than each of them running individually. And so that's sort of what our solution attempts to do is the adjuster is doing his thing, the carrier piece is doing their thing, the insured is doing what they do. Um, everybody is sort of working together in harmony uh, to ultimately collect all of the information that's needed. So to the very end of the process, uh, which we say can be minutes, not days or, or weeks, um, the carrier has the relevant data points to, to look at it, assess it, and say, this is a covered loss, this is how much the covered loss should be, and we're going to issue payment right away. Yeah, so, you know, let's kind of let's kind of drill down on that a little bit. You know, as somebody who, who had started your own insurance company, basically, it sounds like, um, yeah. you know, there's, and this is something I hear from the firms, um, and even from the on the, the carrier side, you know, there's a, a little bit of a struggle between you know the cost savings I think that they can get from automating a lot of processes, um, and the sort of you know gold level white glove uh, experience of having a live person at the house who can answer coverage to you know questions, make coverage decisions, you know, hand insure a check on the spot, you know. Are we going to see a balance between those two things? How how can tech and that sort of you know like that that person to person p 
piece of this industry sort of coexist. Yep. So, um, and again, I'm going to use a lot of sort of uh, ways that I've come up with the best way to explain those. Not that they're not certainly not highly technical ways, but <clears throat> right now, an IA firm or a carrier, for that matter. Um, so, really, no matter what the structure that they use to handle their claims in. Um, their claims department essentially is standing at the end of a fire hose and whatever comes in, they're just sort of, you know, it's one for you, one for you, one for you, one for you. And, um, and so ultimately at the end of the day, everybody's wet. Um, and I don't know how much you put the fire out, right? Cause everybody's just standing, trying to drink from a fire hose. Right. So one of the, one of the processes that we put in place is, you know, again, we affectionately lovingly refer to it as an apple sorter, right? So, you know, apples come in and there are some that look great and need to go to market and there's some that need to be made into apple cider. Um, and so, you know, we have the ability of putting a valve on that fire hose and then triaging the claim sort of as they come in so that we get them assigned to the, to the departments or people that have the highest and greatest area of expertise in that particular type of claim. And so, um, you know, many carriers do this all the time. They have a, you know, a, a, a small, you know, sort of a, a lightning team and a theft team and a, you know, a water team. And, they, you know, they have all these teams where they're trying to pool talent and get some efficiency based on repetitiveness and or have them become subject matter experts in that particular type of claim. Um, what we do is facilitate getting that claim routed to that person much, much more effectively. And then it's kind of, sort of best maybe to give you a couple of real life examples of sure. things that we've done that, that really pay dividends. For instance, um, all of our communication is embedded within our technology. So if you communicate with the policy holder, or for that matter, anybody on the team, um, you can do that via chat, text, phone call, video call, uh, email, any way that you would want to. We're working on a smoke signal integration right now. That's a little behind. Um, but any way that you could possibly integrate and talk to the customer is done from within our solution, right? Because the communication is already there and documented in the claim, you don't have to spend 30 minutes documenting the 15 minute phone call that you just had because the 15 minute phone call is in the claim. It's there. It shows that you spoke, you know, from this person to this person, you talked for 32 minutes and you put a quick note as to what the call is and you're moving on. Text messaging is quite obvious. You can see the text, text exchanges but you're able to do that within the claim itself. Uh, not only are you able to have all the communication in the claim and documented, but you're able to send out uh, links to videos to the customers to educate them as the claims process. And so all these things that we as adjusters go through 50 times you know, a day explaining what recoverable depreciation is or how a deductible works or you know, whatever it may be, it's really much more effective to send that out in a produced video for the customer so that because by the time you tell it the 50th time today, you're not going to, you're not going to tell it as succinctly as you would have uh, had it been the, the eight o'clock in the morning call where you're really, you know, spry and ready to go. Your 530 calls don't usually, you're, you're not quite as articulate at 530 as you are at eight o'clock. So, so I use that. I use the communication piece as a just as an example of, of what we do. The second piece that I've have found to be helpful in explaining what we do is the uh, the communication tool that's embedded in our system also alerts you if and when the customer is calling. And so we did a, a, a report and found out that every call that's made by the policyholder to the adjuster and send to voicemail slows the claim down by 18 hours. You got to call them back and then they call you back and then back and forth, right. and, you know, but on average, it slows the claim down by 18 hours. So in our system, because I know who Mrs. Jones is and I know Mrs. Jones's phone number, when Mrs. Jones calls in and I know she's trying to reach her adjuster, 
I'm able to route that call uh, cleanly to the adjuster. Even if he is working in Mrs. Smith's claim, he receives a notification on the screen that says, hey, Mrs. Jones is calling on this claim. Would you like to take the call? He clicks accept and all of Mrs. Jones's details come up on the screen. So he's not having to send her to voicemail, get the claim number, go back into the system, bring himself back up to speed on Mrs. Jones's claim, and then call her back to try to get an answer. She doesn't answer, you play phone tag, you then go through this cycle five times over. He's in Mrs. Jones's claim, he's reviewing everything, and he's able to answer the question that she has, which is often, as you know, Matt, from handling doing this for years, an incredibly simple and straightforward question, but you don't want to get caught without the, your system open in front of you so that you can reference specific information for Mrs. Jones, because that's what she's calling about, right? Um, Absolutely. And so, so little, I mean, we didn't reinvent claims, Matt. I mean, we really didn't. We, we just took the things that work, put them in a, a singular platform, um, and, and are asking the carriers to not have every report filled out in triplicate, quadruplicate, uh, you know, over and over and over again. Right, right. And, and again, I mean, I, I, I don't think it could be overstated. Um, you know, there is a cost savings for the carriers, certainly, to, to have much, much faster cycle times, to have insureds do everything automatically. But they, I think that at the, the top level, they still lose that competitiveness of, you know, that that person to person interaction. So, you know, when you talk about um, kind of br bringing a balance, this is what I think the dream is. <laughs> and certainly my dream, you know, or you look at technology and you say, hey, it's technology currently is creating a pile of work that we can never get on top of. Right. And but it has the potential to make us be able to not to do just like three or four claims a day or maybe five or six, but maybe 10 or 15 claims a day with high quality, great customer service. You know, that's super, you know, that, that supercharges cycle time, certainly, um, if adjusters are able to, to do the, the basic work of being an adjuster is not, it doesn't take that long. It's all the, the clicky button stuff and the, it, it, the, the it phone tag. Yeah, the phone tag stuff, and, and, and again, text messaging you just eliminate so much of that just in and of itself, right? Yeah. So just the ability of texting the insurer back and forth and keeping them apprised on your location. But but even, you know, if if, if I were managing a cat or, or even daily claims um, and I had you on our system, Matt, I, I would I know where you are physically based on your GPS location. Right. So as that claim comes in and I see that it's a complex claim, it's not a simple lightning claim or something, you know, I, I, I need your expertise in the field, on the ground, collecting data um, for us at the loss location. I'm able to assign you that claim based on where you physically are right now and check if you're able to go to Mrs. Jones's house right now. And then I provide her with that information. Look, Matt's 15 minutes away. He's in traffic. He'll be right there. Um, and so it's not just you. It's you, the water mint vendor, the rooftop guy, the plumber, the, you know, whatever else I need to get to the loss location. We sure. talk about building the team around the claim. Um, there's no reason to send out an adjuster to get there and go, oh, wow, you need water mint. Oh, and oh, we haven't even stopped the water from flowing yet. So really you need a plumber and then you need water mid and then you need a mold test and then you need this. When when we have, when we use our Apple sorter to sort the claim, get it to the right person early on who knows what's happening, whether he's there or not, and is it then able to dispatch the resources um, to get them out there in real time. We, we do another thing with some of our EMS vendors. Um, we have removed from them their need to even prepare an estimate for the scope for a dry down. Because we'll, we'll send them, we'll dispatch them out to the loss. We'll connect with them on a video call, again, inside the claim, so fully documented. And they're walking through, taking measurements and pictures reading relative humidities, we're jotting those in the claim, running our formulas and go, okay, well, it looks, looks based on IRC that we need, you know, two air movers for three days and a DHU and, 
you know, and, the, and, and so you've got a emergency service call and some pickup and some equipment decontamination. And, and so the adjuster is literally sitting there at his keyboard writing the estimate for the EMS company. And at the end of it, he's reviewing it with the EMS company and says, look, the cost for this dry down is $3,276.12. Are you good with that? Great, drop your equipment, let us know if there's any problems and you're done. And I yeah. cut the check to the EMS company. They don't have to spend 50% of their time documenting, they'll still keep their dry logs and everything else, but they don't have to write, and Matt, I think you can attest for this as, as well as anybody else, they don't have to write a $6,000 estimate so that when the adjuster picks that up 120 days from now, he is able to whittle it down to 3,600, which is where it needed to have been in the first place. We just agreed to the 3,600 on the front end and, and cut right. the check. You ever feel like you've been thrown to the wolves by the IA firms you work for, like you're just a number on a roster? Wouldn't it be nice to work with a firm who's big enough to get plenty of work, but still small enough to know you by your first name? Then let me tell you about my friends at the Oklahoma-based IA firm, Pacesetter Claim Service. Founded in 1997, the thing that sets Pacesetter apart is their relentless pursuit of excellence. They hold themselves and their team of adjusters to a higher standard of quality. And now with their advanced all-in-one claims platform called Evo, You'll get a real-time Uber-style map and communication link to the insured, automatic messages sent to customers throughout the process, file review automation, and a fast, accurate scope with Paysetter's partnership with Hover. Hover is integrated directly into Evo, making for a smooth and seamless field scoping experience for you as the adjuster. Technology is moving faster than ever, and Paysetter is right there at the cutting edge. And Paysetter is bringing training to a city near you. Check out their summer tour dates at adjustertv.com slash Paysetter. Again, going back to the tech piece, so this is, you know, when you say, hey, let's let's hook up with the water, you know, restoration company um, and have a video call. I mean, that's like, it seems like the simplest possible thing but it's it's really, I won't say revolutionary, but it's like, it's as it's clear as a nose on our face. But why isn't anybody doing it until now? It seems like. Well, well, listen. I mean, please don't don't let me stop you from spreading the word. But <laughs> but, but we feel exactly the same way. I you know we had we had we handled a bunch of claims during Irma, and um, I don't know how familiar you are with the Florida. Uh, landscape of claims in Florida, but they are um, a little bit litigious. Let's, sure. say, let's say that they are litigation prone. Is that a politically correct way of saying that to sure. avoid getting sued, sued today? <laughs> so, but we had a we had a number of claims where we did a, a video inspection, a video inspection from a license adjuster on the roof at the loss location, following the loss. Um, and and they they go through and, and so when we push the claim to you and you're in in the in our app, you know you get the assignment you go there and, and you're taking roof pictures on the roof, roof, roof videos on the roof, roof 360s on the roof, and so you're taking all these pictures and images by area, and so when it comes back into the claim, the the pictures are already in the areas in which you're taking the pictures or video from, right? But we sent, we had, uh, we were served lawsuit on, you know, several claims from Irma, and we would send over in discovery, we would send over our video of our inspection of the roof uh, to plaintiff counsel. And we had a large number of claims where plaintiff counsel dropped the lawsuit and the client altogether because they refused to go to trial because we had a video showing there's no damage to the roof. Right. <laughs> and so a video tells the story unlike 700 pictures. Sure. So, so we talk about, so we still take photos. You know, it's not like we're only video, but because we are video centric, you know, we're taking pictures of damage and, and context and then the, the video really contextualizes all the pictures. And then now with 360, Matt, it's just the coolest thing in the world. So you can pull up oh, a, a 360 of, of any room, um, a photo, and, and through our solution, sit at your desktop and spin around inside that room and look at anything you need to look at. And, and you really, uh, you, you know, you've been in the field a long time 
Uh, I'm not, that's not a slight to your age, but my point is a bathroom's a bathroom's a bathroom, right? Right. And so, yeah. um, you know, so my question is, you know, how many tub diverter valve claims have you written in your history of being an adjuster? Do you need to go back? Do you need to spend an hour and a half in traffic to properly write a tub diverter valve claim? That's right. Yeah, exactly. I would argue no. If we know, you know, if we have the understanding of knowing what the causation is up front, we know that their coverage, we know that the policy was in force at the date of loss. Uh, you know, if, if all the telltale signs are there that, hey, this and this is a tub to vertebrae claim, let's pay it. But remove all of the ridiculous, you know, just duplicity that has become a hallmark of handling claims for any carrier because the carriers are concerned and rightfully so, but they're driven by the litigation departments that on that one claim, we didn't have X. Well, we'll never let that happen again. We're always going to have X on every, on a thousand claims, even though we only needed it on one claim. Well, right. we give you X, we just give it to you in a much more user-friendly, customer-centric approach where you're amalgamating data from all of the various sources and you're moving a claim through the process. Yeah, for sure. And I think from a, from the adjuster, sort of the boots on the ground perspective, um, I'm always talking about um, adjusters needing to build, to be more efficient. You know, I say, you know, in my heyday, I could close seven to nine hail claims a day, closed on site in the field. At the end of the day, I go back to my hotel room. It doesn't really matter what the carrier process is, how much rigmarole and hoops and all that stuff. I figure it out, right? Because I don't want to be there. It's not worth it to do it for two to four claims or even five claims a day, right? Um, so I'm always talking about what I call incremental efficiency. So I track everything that I do. You know, when I do my scope, I write down the start time and the end time, right? And then I try to beat that, right? With this kind of thing, this sort of, these sorts of, of uh, efficiencies, I mean, they're not like, you know, 30 seconds here and two minutes there. These are hours, days that are taken off of, you know, the, the amount of time that uh, the, fir the, you know, the initial adjuster, the first contact person, whoever's out there off of, the work that they do, and they can, they, it, I think it does a couple of things. We, at the minimum, it, it gives them more room to have a better customer, to provide a better customer experience, and allows them to get more work done and make more money, right? It sounds, I mean, where have you been all my life? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, here we are. So, so let me ask you this. When's the last time you had a carrier say, yeah, we don't need you to label pictures? The zero times ever. But our carriers do. Our carriers are thrilled with the idea and with the work product that we're providing them. We don't label pictures. How do you do that, sir? Because remember, we're capturing video on a per room basis, right? Right. And so video, which is naturally narrated is telling yeah. everything that you would need to know about the ceiling or the walls or the floor or the baseboard or whatever it is you're articulating the damages in that room and then on each video or picture clip we actually have you market one of three things either damage context or 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 to be reviewed so you're marking it red yellow or green and so you're going into the kitchen, there's no damage to the kitchen, you're taking an overall video, you're taking 15, 20 pictures of the kitchen, you're marking, everything is marked green. So when the examiner is reviewing the kitchen, think of it like a file folder, a tree on, a, on, a, uh, in an Xactimate or a file folder in Explorer, the kitchen has got a little halo around it that's green. So why does the examiner need to go into the kitchen to review the kitchen? And so if you go into the bathroom, it's got a little red halo around it. All of the pictures in the video in the bathroom are marked damage because that's where the damage is. But there's a 45 second video of you explaining exactly what you see in that bathroom. Oh, and then 30 <laughs> pictures of 
fun with that. Right. Why am I going to have you sit down for two hours after expecting that loss and type out hallway bathroom view of ceiling no damage hallway bathroom view of drywall damage from tub divert tub diverter valve on and on cop you know control c control v control v control v uh -oh, okay this is the floor in the bathroom with no damage i mean matt we've all been there where we're just looking at this sort of you know cacophony of information and because there was no video that substantiated any of this we're trying to give bits and pieces of the story but you give the story in the pictures and then you give the story in the closing report and then you give the story in the estimate and then you know you've given the story in seven different places and all of that equates to just inefficiency sure absolutely so from kind of a practical standpoint like how does what does that look like as far as, you know, so I'm, I'm out there, the adjuster, I collect video and photos and I do my scope and everything and then I send that up. As a desk, as a file reviewer or desk adjuster, I'm looking at that, am I like, is it attached to Xactimate or like, what does that look like? No, the, the estimating tool is simply, I mean, we're, we're agnostic as to which estimating tools, whether it's, you know, Integra or Xactimate, whatever the ultimate. Integra. The estimate, oh boy. estimate, Estimates should be used to enumerate damage, right? Sure. The claims process should be set up to gather the requisite information to arrive at the number that's in the estimate, right? So, so my point is we don't work with or without, I mean, we don't, we don't care what, I mean, whether you use a cocktail napkin or Xactimate to figure out that it's a $3,200 loss, that's based on what your carrier sets up as the requirements, right? So they're logging into your system in order to access this information. We, well, we can export it, but we essentially, with, uh, with our existing carriers, we actually overlay their system so even their examiners and desk adjusters and all their people are in our system looking at the data that we're collecting or various other adjusters are collecting for their claims. And then we pass data, the required data, through an API back down to their system of record. So reserve updates and you know all of those things uh, sure. are adjusted and, and passed back down into their system of record. Okay. You know, I want to take but all, but, all the, but all the day to day, I'm sorry to interrupt, but all the day to day, you know, I contacted the insured, I scheduled an inspection, I did this, I did that, I did all of that stuff is in our system and clearly articulated. And, and on the top of every one of our claims, we actually sort of track, depending on the claim type, where you are in that workflow so that on the upper right hand corner of every one of our claims it shows this claim is 72 percent done or 67 percent done or 54 percent done no so you're able to see where you are in that claims process and what's up next i bet managers lost their minds when they saw that oh man it, it gives them the ability to go to their boss yeah exactly but it gives them the ability of going to their boss and say Okay, for this event, we've had this number of claims, and they are collectively X percent complete after you know ones that have been filed in the last fifteen days. So, so it's able to put real, real meat on the proverbial bone as to where their claims are in their life cycle, not just well, so many are inspected and so many have got estimates written, right. and so you know, I mean, the, that's a, that's a. That's that's not that's not a not a quantifiable number, right? Sure. So it's so it's a it's a like a really really useful actionable metric versus a vanity metric that you know it's yeah. fluffy. Oh, it's numbers on a screen, and we're going to have to do a presentation for this meeting, and then I'm going to go get lunch. Um, right. It's something that yeah. you can actually use. So I want to take a couple of steps backwards um, on the water mitt thing. Have you ever heard of Phoenix Dry Link? Okay, so Phoenix Dry Link, these guys reached out to me um, last year and uh, wanted to tell me about their technology solution for um, real-time uh, water mitigation analytics, right? So yep. the dry out logs, the, what, what the, the percentage of humidity in the room via the DHU, it's all networked. Um, a guy can show up. 
with on his, an app on his phone and pull up every single everything in the whole place, see where it's at, see how far along they are in their dry out, um, or back at their office, same thing. Um, is this something you guys have the solution for that? Yeah, so so we are able to ingest data from anywhere. So what he's talking about is IoT, right? So they, in other words, they've made all of their equipment smart devices. So they put exactly. them on the network. And when they get to the house or commercial location, they're then asking for permission to have those devices join the local Wi-Fi network that's there, or they're taking with them a you know a, a cell phone that pings out every five minutes and pings out all the relevant data that's there. So again, those are just IoT devices. So absolutely, we are able to ingest any of that data into the claim set and display that is is actionable data yes sir well that's that's so we answer. have a, interestingly enough we have a carrier who has just come to us a, a, a new carrier who's just come to us and they're they're essentially building their entire company around our ability um to monitor and manage uh, IoT devices, smart devices, water water detection devices, carbon monoxide, you know, fire fire alarms, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so ultimately, we're trying to move to the left of FNOL, right? Okay. So you know, think of a claim on a, on a timeline. You know, FNOL is the start line. We're trying to move, you know, to the left of the start line so that we're contacting the customer saying. Hey, have you checked your water meter? There could be a problem. It's been running for twelve hours. You know, it could be. Oh yeah, you can your pipe. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think that you know this is it's 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 exciting to see you know people putting their brains into you know how we can actually make the technology you know work better for us and and to kind of to hit on the the best practices. I mean, we know um, that. Uh, the, the 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 best thing that the carriers want, and I think the customer wants. I mean, as a as a insurance consumer myself, I don't want to necessarily do. And this is, this is me. It may be my age group or whatever. But you know, there's people in this country who are consumers of insurance who want to have be able to talk to somebody who can answer their questions. It's like when you take a car, get it fixed, and if you don't get an answer, what what's wrong with it? I mean, you know, you're going to get frustrated. Um, so, 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 I, so I tell this. Yeah. I tell the story quickly, and I'll, and I'll try to I'll try to do it quickly here as well too. But take as long as you need. Well, well I, I you know <laughs> I try not to be loquacious. Uh, so even our FNOL process is different, right? Uh, we don't have CSRs who take FNOLs. We have FNOLs taken by adjusters. Why? Here's the current legacy FNOL process. Are you interested in more than just punching a clock and paying the bills? Wouldn't you rather be on the A-team, surrounded by the best of the best in the industry? Then you need to check out Eberl Claim Service. For well over 30 years, Eberl's philosophy of treating adjusters as they wish to be treated has allowed them to establish a vast network of the most professional, educated, and dedicated adjusters in the industry. So at Eberl, you're in good company. If you're a motivated and compassionate adjuster slash claims professional, Eberl wants you to represent their organization. Go to jobs.eberls.com right now and get started with Eberl Claim Service. Claim happens in Mrs. Jones's house. She calls her agent. She gets the agent's receptionist and, and spends 15 minutes telling her what happened. Is she's got water in her house. She very politely listens, gets to the end of the 15 minutes as well. You need to actually talk to the agent about this. I'm just, you know, the, the receptionist here at the, the agency. Uh, yeah, I'll have Bob call you. So Bob calls Mrs. Jones back and says, what happened, Ms. Jones? Well, here's what happened. And she tells a 10 minute story of the water and how she found it and what happened and go from there. And then what does he say at the end of that call? Well, Mrs. Jones, you need to actually call the carrier directly and tell them and file your claim. Okay, fine. So she gets the 1-800 from her for agent. She calls the carrier. She gets a CSR on the phone. They walk her through a script, which is, you know, usually poor to, to horrible. Uh, they walk through a script. <laughs> She now spends five minutes answering the questions of the CSR and, and talking about this water that's in her house. And then the claim eventually gets assigned to an adjuster. And then what when the adjuster calls, Matt, you're an adjuster, what's the very first thing that you ask Ms. Jones 
Oh, well, listen, if you want to just kind of run through what happened at the house over there, <laughs> tell me again what, what happened. Because this is the fifth time I've done this. Yeah. How many times do I need to tell you what happened in my house? Yeah. And so you are already starting that relationship from a position of frustration on behalf of the policyholder because they've told the story five times. And now if you yeah. also notice the timeline, they started with a 15 minute really robust explanation with all kinds of details. And then it went to 10 minutes and then went to five minutes. And by the time she gets you on the phone, she's like, hey, I don't know, something broke in my house, I got water. When are you coming out? So she's yeah, already upset. Exactly. You know, and, and she's not giving you any details. And, and so we simply are able to triage that better, get that first call in and say, okay, we, we understand you're filing a new claim. Let's get you right to an adjuster so that, so that they're going to a bank of, you know, really experienced adjusters who are able to take that first call recorded by the way, ask Walker through the real life scenario, not from a script. That's the important part because scripts are only as good as scripts, but they're able to right. actually engage with the customer, talk about what their damages are. And because you have handled 3,500 tub diverter valve claims, you know the right questions to ask because you know, not because a script is telling you, uh, I'm sorry, did you call the fire department? Why did I call the fire department? Water <laughs> claim. Is right. that a, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry, ma'am. Is that a no? Was that no? Yeah. Okay, no. Great. Uh, you know, so it, it's, you know, if you route the claim or the call effectively, you get the right qualified person on the phone with them. We have had many, many times, Matt, where we'll take an FNOL call, we'll convert that call into a video call, see that it's a very limited bedroom scope and everything else. And we literally have had money in customers' accounts in 15 to 20 minutes from filing an FNOL. I mean, our biggest challenge to date has been getting the customers to understand what a leap this has been in the process because they go, well, yeah, it worked as the way I assumed that it would work. And you, yeah. how are you going to tell a customer, ma'am, you don't realize this normally would have taken two months. I just got you paid in 15 minutes. I need you to get a little excited. And they just go, <laughs> right. that's kind of what I expected you know, it would be. You're, you're going to spoil them. They're going to be spoiled. Yeah. Um, so, and it's, it's funny you mentioned that about the sort of the legacy FNOL process. For most of my career, it was part of my spiel when I first contacted somebody to say, hey, listen, you know, could establish a little bit of rapport briefly, identify myself, et cetera, and, so, and, then, and then say, I know, um, I apologize in advance. I know you've, you probably had to tell a story a couple times, but if you could just briefly just recap for me what's going on over there at the house, I'd, be, I'd really appreciate it. So to help me to, to take care of you better. And and you're you're in the one percent of adjusters who do that. I, I yeah. had a I had, really anecdotally and quickly. I had a I ran a large loss team for guys losses in excess of two hundred fifty thousand dollars all over the country for a pretty large carrier for a while. And I had one of the guys that worked for me and, and I got a call from, I signed him the claim and about 30 minutes later, I was getting a call from his, from his new insured, 30 minutes after I signed him the claim. I, and, and I'm anal about answering my phone. So I, I picked the call up, and, you know, didn't know who it was and picked the call up and man, I, this guy just lit me up and he was so upset. This poor guy had lost um, a few animals his house was a foot and a half off the ground. I mean, burned to, you know, just burned all the way down. Nothing sure. standing, right? And and he called me and he says, you know, and of course, with calling me every name in the book, rightfully so. He said, this guy called me up and his first question was, you know, how's it going? <laughs> right. Read the room, man. Read the room. <laughs> Jesus. And you're like... Yes, sir. I, I apologize about that. Um, I, I I thought that I had taught empathy a little better, but I apologize. Uh, that is certainly not what he intended to say, sir. And and we were on our back foot that entire claims process. Boy, yeah. Because the adjuster, innocuously enough, I mean, my adjuster was not a bad guy, right? He was, you know, I mean, he was 
you know, but had he prefaced it with, you know, under the circumstances or, you know, I know it's been a tough day, but, you know, is there anything we can do? For, I mean, something, but to lead an introduction with, you know, hey, how's, how's it going? You got, a, <laughs> you, got a, you got a pretty explicit response is all I'll say to that. I but. bet. I bet he did. And that's, you know, and, and it's, 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 it's absolutely true that when th that first call, I mean, it is, it's pretty critical, especially the bigger the loss is or the, you know, the, the more sensitive the homeowner is, you know, no matter what size the loss is. You get off on the right foot. Um, it, it, it goes a long way to making the rest of the process a lot smoother because they, they learn to, if not trust you, they, at least they don't believe that you're trying to like, you know, screw them basically, right? And, drag why, the and, that's why, and that's why video has, has really been so helpful for us converting those phone calls into video calls. And by the way, we can do that with, you don't have to down, the customer doesn't have to download anything. They don't have to download an app and sign in. It's just a text message link that they're able to click on and I'm in a video call with them. Um, and so establishing that face-to-face -face rapport is still so very real. And so, you know, we teach a lot and spend a lot of time talking about, you know, empathy and the ability to communicate and, uh, you know, and how to relate to that person via video. Um, you know, that's been a, a wonderful tool in order to provide the, the customer centric experience that really most carriers aspire to do. I mean, I, I know of no carrier who goes, yeah, we don't care about our policyholders. We want to do a crappy job. Right. Clearly, none of them, clearly none of them either say that or feel that way in my experience. Right. They're all trying Sorry. to do the right thing. Um, but they've just been going about it by sanding around the edges rather than, um, you know, just chunking the whole process out and figuring it out cleaner. Right, right. So run us through sort of like from start to finish, you know, as from the adjuster's perspective, getting assigned a claim, taking that FNOL, um, you know, what are they, you know, not specifically what are they doing on the app necessarily, but like taking a video call, and like from start to finish to where they wrap up that claim and, and send it to the next uh, to the next person. Sure. So so it really it really depends on the role that that adjuster is playing. So you know we have a, a desk adjuster role where you know it's a guy sitting at his desk in, you know in in Topeka Kansas um, and it doesn't matter where the claim is but the claim comes in and it's routed to him based on a number of metrics you know licensing language spoken years of serve you know years of of specialty in that field et cetera et cetera we find the right guy he's now the the desk adjuster or the quarterback on that claim um, and and then he makes a decision pretty quickly as to whether he's going to need uh, external services, i.e. water mitigation, whether it's a, a remote inspection. Um, and then he is able to dispatch those in real time based on the geographic location of that adjuster, inspector, or whatever it may be. Um, so, it, so to answer your question, I, I have to be clear, there are a lot of people wearing a lot of different hats or roles. Um, and so it just, but you know, from the from the from the field adjuster's vantage point, he would essentially receive the notification on his phone uh, as if as if he were a Uber driver. Now, let me be clear: I'm not equating the two, but um, you know, but he receives the notification. Do you want this claim? He accepts it. He gets all the details. He's then able to text back and forth with the insured, arrange for uh, an inspection. Hopefully, it's you know, immediate. Um, that's why the claim was assigned to him because he's geographically located closest to them. Uh, get out there, uh, do the inspection, take the appropriate pictures, recorded statements, videos, uh, diagrams, measurements, everything that he needs to. And then depending on how, depending on what was assigned to him, he's either been assigned just the inspection piece. And so it can go back up into a queue of we have a team of estimate writers that pulls claims off the queue and then they just watch the video, see the pictures, take the measurements, and then translate that into an estimate that goes back into the claim file where the desk adjuster is notified, or it could be a you know sort of a full assignment where we are tasking you to do the inspection and prepare the estimate. Um, in which case you do the inspection, you take all the pictures, the media, everything else. 
when you leave the house, you check out of the lost location, that information gets automatically streamed back to the claim and linked to the claim. So you don't have to do anything else. It's just linked and automatically is there. You write your estimate whenever you write your estimate and then you, you attach it to the claim as a document and you're done. So it just depends on the, the role that you play, right? So you can you can just be the, you know, the, the guy in the field with boots uh, or you can be a boot and, and, you know, a little bit of estimate writing. It all just depends on what that claim specifics call for, depending on the complexity of the claim, the carrier, you know, any number of factors. Sure. Yeah. And I think, you know, kind of <clears throat> to, to go back to what you were saying a little bit earlier, talking about, you know, getting a phone call when you're on a roof, right? You know, if you take the call, if you don't send it to voicemail, which, you know, pre presents a whole other you know, set of issues. You're standing up on a, on a homeowner's roof. Somebody calls you from a number. You don't can't identify it just by the number. It's a local number, probably, or it's unknown, right? Hey, it's Matt with such such insurance company. You know, uh, the person identifies themselves and oh, my claim number is well, 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 hold on a second. You know, write down on my piece of paper. Climb down off the roof if I have to, you know, if it's not just like, hey, well, I just wanted to confirm tomorrow at 5 p.m., right? Well, I can, I can write that on my whatever piece of paper I've got in front of me. Or, um, hey, I got your message about, uh, you know, explaining the settlement, da, da 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 I had a bunch of questions for you. If you could go over that stuff with me, it'd be great. Do I really want to say, let me call you back? Because which then presents the opportunity for phone tag, which nobody right. likes. Or do I jump down off that roof, walk all across the yard, Jump in my truck, turn it on, put the AC on, to open up my laptop, boot it up, whatever, you know, lock into Xactimate or whatever, and then find that guy's thing and start going through it with him. That takes time. Going through it takes time. Um, and then get, you know, buttoning all that stuff up, turn the truck off, go back up on the roof. Where was I? Right. Now I've lost, you know, at the absolute minimum, absolute minimum 15 minutes, probably more like 45 plus absolutely right absolutely so I'm, I'm intrigued by this by the ability for the the app to allow you to um kind of triage things yourself as they come in you know and have a lot of information right there in your hand so that you can say oh okay well mrs smith i do need to talk to her real quick because i know it's not going to take very long are you new to the professional claims industry confused about exactly how to get started as an ia worried that the advice you're getting on social media might not be totally accurate, then you need to check out IA Path. IA Path helps adjusters get started in their new career in 90 days with online mentorship programs and training. If you need help getting started or making a transition as an adjuster, head over to iapath.com slash adjuster TV for a free video course showing you how to get working in the next 90 days. That's iapath.com slash Adjust your TV. That's right. And that puts you in, as I said, it puts you in Mrs. Smith's claim with all of the documents that are there. And so you're, you're able to see everything, you know, so if you, if you have, if it is a, I want to review my estimate with you, you know, with a single click, you're able to pull that document up, the PDF document up, and you're able to have it right there on your phone with you while you're standing on the roof. And again, you know, the question, is it a, you know, is it a three, is it a three minute, Hey, what is this? recoverable depreciation mean or is it let's discuss you know line by line line your line number you know 12 through 72 you know maybe that's more right. that you go let's, i'm sorry i'm on an inspection uh, i've got your you got your number i'll text you in a few minutes when i'm back in the car and we can go through it but but at least you have the ability of, of triaging that in real time because most calls at least in our experience are very, very quick. You know, did you get your estimate done? Did the check get sent out? Did, you know, what is recovery appreciation? Are you coming tomorrow at five o'clock? You know, really simple, yeah. you know, quick answer questions that really, you know, and we know what happens when you send those to voicemail. Um, you know, A, you start the game of phone tag or B, you get a call from your examiner and his and his boss and his boss's boss and his boss's boss's boss because that guy that was the voicemail that broke the camel's back. Right. He's now going to get somebody to answer his phone call, and you know he was seven levels up before somebody finally said hello, and so now everybody you know now this claim has become a hot claim because 
you know, yeah. you could answer a quick uh, call of appreciation question. Yeah, for sure. I was having a conversation with uh, a friend of mine. He was one of my very first ever carrier team managers um, when I first started. And we're still friends to this day. We actually saw him a couple weekends ago. Um, but he was talking, he's at a very big company. Um, he was talking about the Irma experience. And he's not a cat, he doesn't do cat managing anymore. But, you, you know, as a, at a carrier, you can vol you know, volunteer to do cat duty and get some cat pay or whatever, you know, either remotely or go on site. And he was doing remotely and he had some of his people on his, like, his little team that he works on for this kinds of claims he does. And he got so sick of um, the Department of Insurance, you know, inquiries and everything, because he has to literally, for every single one of those, he's got to do a formal response. And it adds like tons and tons of paperwork and, and phone calls and everything else to his thing, just because of this, like the, the adjuster, you know, doesn't call back when he says it's going to, or doesn't explain something, or never calls back, uh, right. or sends that they play phone tag, and, and it was that the voicemail that, you know, the guy was in his last. If I don't get a hold of somebody, ah, here we go, you know, doesn't even leave a message, hangs up and calls the Department of Insurance. Right? Um, it's it's a kind of a big deal, and and the carriers don't like it, and I think it, you know, it's if if an adjuster gets a reputation that they're you know, they're, they're the cause of lots of supplements and reinspections or DOI um, complaints. It's going to not be good for their career, for yeah, sure. Absolutely, absolutely. And and again, the other thing is so true. And I, I know you and Chris and others have talked about this, but this is a tiny, tiny, tiny industry. It is. Know? And so, um, as much as it feels you know, wily and unexpansive or expansive, it's just not. I mean, you know, there's guys that, you know, I've known for 20, 30, 40 years in this industry. And, you know, they, some of these guys are really technically great guys, but have no customer service skills, have no people skills. And so they're always at the bottom of the list to get called out. I mean, they just, they're always at the bottom, but they're technically amazing. And so, uh, and I'm not trying to pivot back to our solution, but this is where we can leverage their skill sets, put those guys behind a keyboard, reviewing data and, and creating estimates because they're technically amazing, but with very strict instructions of do not talk to anyone, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, um, you know, we call you, don't call us. Right. Um, but but we're able to, I mean, we have had such an outpouring of, you know, old retired cat guys. And, and again, I mean, old in the, the loving term, right? Just, you know, the guys that have been out in the field a hundred years. No offense and, taken. Well, not, not to you, sir. But, <laughs> uh, but, you know, guys that have just been there and done that a thousand times and they have no real desire or ability, quite frankly, to, you know, hump 15 roofs a day anymore. Well, listen, you sure. can still make phenomenal money sitting at home, collecting the information, preparing a, a highly technical, super qualified estimate, and, and you'll still make great money and you will have no hotel expense, no, you know, no, no, uh, no, no gas expense, and, and you don't have to climb, you know, that two-story 10 12. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that, uh, you know, I think pe people forget a lot of times when they see, you know, remote desk assignment stuff and they're like, oh, it only pays X. I'm like, listen, you're going to save probably three or four thousand bucks a month just to have the fact to get in your car and go to a hotel easily. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, let's talk about let's talk about merge. Tell me tell me about merge and what that's all about. Yeah, so Merge is, is the desktop application that just sort of amalgamates all of that stuff. I mean, so Merge is just the, the name that we've, you know, of our desktop app where, uh, you know, adjusters and carriers and everybody else sort of, you know, logs into from their desktop. And again, as I said, we have a, a, a an app extension and some other pieces that play into that. But Merge is just sort of where the adjuster works every day. Gotcha. So, Teleclaims is you're an you're an IA firm. Is that is, my, is that correct? We're, we're, 
Correct. I mean, we are both a technology shop, uh, which is Teleclaims, I mean, legally, Teleclaims Incorporated. And then we have Teleclaims Adjusting, which is an IA firm. And I've got 4,500 people who, you know, use the system in varying capacities and, and whatever else. So, um, so we are both a technology shop and, a, and an IA firm. So uh, it just really depends on which hat I'm wearing. Uh, Merge is the technology. Um, gotcha, and then, gotcha. you know, when I, when I talk about people doing stuff, it could either be, you know, our independent adjusters or carrier, you know, just whoever's leveraging and using the system to ultimately close the link. Um, I think what a lot of our, our viewers and listeners want to kind of know about is what kind of opportunities do you have for, for folks? Um, what needs do you have? You know, are there any particular places in the country where you're looking for more adjusters? Or, you know, is there... Um, what opportunities do you have, basically? Yeah, I mean, listen. I mean, we we uh, like all IA firms. Or, I mean, we are uh, we serve the pleasure of our carrier partners, right? Um, and so, as they have needs, we you know look to try to fill some of those needs. Um, um, I, you know, we just the other day you know, had a need for some more comp adjusters, and so you know we're able to leverage. I mean, although we are much more property centric. Um, you know, through the course of time, we had some work comp guys that uh, had joined our roster, and so we we're able to put those guys to work in a in a work comp scenario. So, so really, I mean, I, I don't have any specific needs. Oh, I need adjusters in Minnesota or tech. You know, I, mean, I don't have any pockets that I'm that I'm that I'm currently lagging. Um, but I would just encourage everybody to go to tele-adjuster.com and, and sign up uh, on the roster and um, and then you'll begin receiving our emails and hopefully we're doing a decent job we could always do better but a decent job of keeping everybody informed and up to speed on where we are and what we're looking for and, you know times when we'll reach back out and ask for you know updated resumes and things like that when we're you know when we're looking for for final placement so um, sure. So, you know, get on the roster and hopefully we grow to put more people to work. Sure. Yeah. Any advice for adjusters, maybe newer adjusters or, or people that are interested in getting on your roster for how they can sort of maximize their, you know, opportunities with teleclaims? That's a, a great question. I, you know, again, I think it's, you know, we, we go to the resume level. So when we're onboarding you, we're asking a, a lot of sort of granular, specific questions. Uh, one of the things, by the way, that um, I think might be a benefit or, or might be a differentiator for us and the adjusters would be um, multilingual, right? So if you, you know, if you speak an additional language, you know, we have a place to capture that uh, in the onboarding process. Obviously, uh, we also have a place to capture the states in which you're licensed. So to the extent that you're more than a single state adjuster, that's always a good thing um but but we do go to the resume level and so i think that's the biggest deficiency at, for our industry as a whole is we all get used to going out handling storm claims feeling or i've seen storm storm cat daily whatever it may be um you know knowing that you're really good at your job and not keeping your resume updated and somehow thinking that well you know i'm i'm Matthew Allen, everybody should know who I am. And, you know, so my reputation should perceive me. Um, uh, and it just does it. And it just does it. I mean, <laughs> I, I, you know, and I, I don't mean for you, Matt. I, I, you know, I don't mean you. No, I just mean, it, it doesn't. I, I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're only as good as your resume reads from a, you know, to show me what claims you've handled. You know, obviously, I'm not talking about at the claim level, but I'm talking about, you know, give me some granular detail on, you know, handled 252 ARMA claims and 312 Michael claims and, you know, 115 Irma claims or, or Ida claims. I mean, just show me those deployments. You know, I don't need a, really, when I say claim account, I don't need a claim count number, but just you know, show me how long you were deployed and and give me some sense of, you know, what sort of experience you actually have. Because to 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 have a resume that says, you know, 
uh, qualified empathetic adjuster who's been licensed since 2018. Well, I mean, Matt, what does that mean? I mean, you've looked at resumes. I mean, what? I mean, you, you could either be a rock star or you might not be able to spell insurance. Right, right. Uh, yeah, for sure. So, Absolutely. You know, show, showing that practical experience is really, for us, uh, uh, you know, the differentiator. Sure. Um, what would you say from your vantage point is the, the future of claims handling? Teleclaims. Um, <laughs> yes. And we're out. No, I'm just kidding. And scene. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, listen, I, ultimately, I, I think there is, there is an industry pivot afoot. Uh, being serious, I think that for you know, since the earliest of contracts were written in the in the pub in in London, uh, you know, the insurance carriers have always um, held the proverbial upper hand, if you will. You know, they've always been the the bigger guy in the room, um, and so they've sort of dictated terms. I think in the up until the 80s, and again, I'm doing a little bit of history here, but you know, up until the 1980s, insurance companies really engaged with their customers, and it was a collaborative approach to handling a claim. Um, but starting sort of in the 80s, uh, and, and and I won't I won't try to pinpoint what the causation was, but um, in the 80s, we started down a path of. Mr. Ms. Insured, we have your claim. If you would be so kind as to go sit in the corner and we'll tell you when we're done. Um, and, and then we will dictate to you what our findings are. Um, and we will tell you how much money we are going to pay you or what process we are going to use to indemnify you. I think that has run its course. And so I think that um, you know, we don't just use customer centric as a buzzword. <laughs> we, we really mean that. And, and so we think that the industry has worn that position out. And so the companies that will really succeed going forward are ones who look to engage with their customers, not hide from them, um, answer their questions on the first call, not, not, send, not send them the voicemail figuratively, right? I don't care sure. about, you know, sure. most specifically, but be there for their customers um, and involve them in the claims process. Educate them along the way, because now with the ubiquity of information, um, customers are going to be educated. Who, and, and again, so my question to the carriers would be, there is a plethora of information available who do you want educating your policy owners? You or the attorney or public adjuster who's going to be working to undermine your credibility? And they have a and they have a decision to make. And so, I, so really, Matt, I, you know, that's where I see claims going because it's what the customers expect slash demand. Um, but more importantly. It's just what makes the most sense for everybody. I mean, it just, you know, I, I, I really despise the, the, the term win-win because it's so often overused and inappropriate and it sounds right. salesman -y. Yeah. But if the carriers will step out, get in front of a claim, disseminate a ton of information, engage with their clients and talk to them, They'll, they'll have a customer for life and, and you know, in a bottom line that reflects that. For sure, for sure. So the last time we talked, um, we did a little thing called I Had This One. Um, if you've got an amusing adjuster story that you could share with everybody, it doesn't have to be amusing. It could be terrifying. Uh, it could be instructive. I, uh, although I, I told this story to someone recently, and I, I won't, I won't, uh, it may have been you, I, I, I don't know, but I guess my point is, um, so, so the, the funniest one, and, and this is, 
the reason this is funny is is so I'll tell it an anecdotal funny story. Um, and it was about a very, very, very good friend of mine who I trained in the business years ago. So I wasn't physically there. So this is secondhand information. Um, but but I know this adjuster and um, and I've talked to a lot of adjusters who have also had similar situations, but he was handling a claim um, and it was somewhere rural. I don't remember the you know the state or county or, or anything, but it was rural. So he pulls up to the lost location and you know, the, the, the dog crawls out from under the trailer, comes out and sniffs him and says hello. And, you know, he, he handles that pretty well and moves on his inspection. And the next thing he knows, uh, um, a goose comes up to say hello and apparently falls in love with him. And now this goose is following him around the entire inspection and snipping and pecking at his calves the entire inspection time. <laughs> <laughs> and the insured is trying to shoo him off. He's trying to shoo him off. Um, and uh, and so I, I can just imagine the uh, the uncomfortableness when you're being chased around a property by a goose who has decided that you're his new best friend. And uh, so the so the analogy would or the anecdote is, you know, uh, you know, always be careful. You never know who's going to fall in love with you tomorrow. Um, <laughs> or be sure to I, bring goose treats with you, or yeah, don't bring yeah, goose treats so that maybe they or smell. Or don't, I, you know. I don't know, if you had, I don't know if you had pate the night before, and the goose no, was no. upset about that. You're right. Story, but, uh, I feel like I, I mean, I, obviously, you nobody's ever seen it all, but um, I did some some quick math the other day as to the number of claims that either I've handled or been the direct supervisor on, and the numbers just you know, obscene, right? That's right. The numbers, the numbers get obscene really quickly. And you're like, how did I give this much of my life to <laughs> doing yeah. this? To 30, looking years, at 30, years of, 30 years of this that, uh, yeah. you know, who the fuck, who the fuck? So, but listen, it's well, been great. And yeah, for I've sure. And thank you so much for being here. So if people want to find more information and uh, kind of engage with you, where can they go? Yeah, so uh, teleclaims.com, www.teleclaims, that's with an A, so it's T-E-L-A-C-L-A-I-M-S.com. I'm sure you'll be kind enough to put the link up on the bottom of the, oh, yeah. of the screen, maybe. Um, so yeah, teleclaims.com, or uh, check us out on LinkedIn, or wherever it may be. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, David. I really appreciate it. This is, this is a really great conversation, and uh, I look forward to chatting with you again in the near future. Um, but you know, that's all I got for you. Unless you got anything else you want to add. There is something I'd like to add. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I just wanted to say in passing, I think you're doing God's work for adjusters. There was never anything like what you're doing. Uh, when I started out a hundred years ago, no single source to people, you know, just sort of calling it the way it is. And, you know, not making the adjuster feel like uh, he or she is out there alone and, and struggling with the same thing. So kudos to you, sir, in doing what you're doing. I, it really, it's it's a needed, a much needed uh, medium to, you know, for, for people to coalesce around and have a singular, you know, sort of voice and, and someone who's pragmatic and realistic. You know, I mean, you're not idealistic and, uh, um, you know, you're, you're, you're not slanted towards the carrier or away from the carrier. You're just kind of calling it the way it is. And so, uh, again, thanks for the service. And, and uh, I'm sure there are a lot of adjusters that will, will never say thank you, but you've been a tremendous help for them because they've identified with the story you've told or, uh, or, or whatever it is. So, again, great work and, and just keep up the great work. Well, I really appreciate you saying that. That's, that's the best I can hope for, I guess. So, but yeah. thanks a lot, David. We'll catch up with you later. Sounds great, man. Thanks for your time. If you enjoyed this episode of Adjuster TV Radio, leave us a five-star review on iTunes. Find more episodes at adjustertv.com slash podcast. This is Adjuster TV.